never know. Hey, God can take that seed and, and do wonderful things. So, yeah, we were uh, out. I, I don't know which of the pictures here, but we were out. When, well, when I was showing you their houses, you know, when you saw the coverings on their houses were all messed up. And the, it was the rainy season. That was right before I came here. It was the rainy season. And the wind, what happens is the wind carries away their, the covering on their house, that grass covering. And so they get wet at night, and many of them have to, you know, when it rains, it just pours. It's not like here. It just drenches the place for a long time. And, and then they get wet, and many of them, in the middle of the night, they're just getting soaked wet in all their clothes and everything. And they have to get out. Some of them told stories about getting out on the front porch know, where there was at least a little bit of covering and just having to not being able to lay in their bed, you know, laying on the ground or their front porch or whatever during the middle of the night. And they just have a really rough time, you know. I mean, it's just a whole different world over there. So if you guys ever get to thinking that you're poor or that you have it bad, you know, remember uh, there's guys sleeping on the dirt floor on the, on the porch because in their bedroom it's raining right down on the iron. You saw the plastic hanging down and full of water and yeah. Um, it's a different world. I was sure. talking about Eric Warren about the mosquito nets. They have a uh, fund where you send money and you send mosquito nets over there because the main debt, it's the number one debt of the AIDS in Africa is malaria. Yeah, I think uh, malaria supersedes AIDS yeah. as far as death toll. Yeah, that's right. They just, just imagine. I mean, one of them, you know, I, I, I asked him, did they appreciate the mosquito nets, you know, and he said, yeah. I said, what did you do before? And he said, we just, we just laid there and got eaten like a pig. You know, eaten, you know, the mosquitoes just ate us like a, that's the word he used, like a pig, like pigs, you know. That's what we, how we live over here, mosquitoes eating us alive. And it's true, they just, so, yeah, we've got it, got it good in a lot of ways over here. So, well, okay. Do you have, uh, on your internet site, do you have a place where people can just direct deposit money into? Yes. You'll have to leave that information with us. Okay. It's uh, www.dream-project.org. But I'll look, I'll look and make sure and give it to you guys before I leave. I want to say, yeah. Freedom Center. Yeah. I want to say, I'm Freedom Yeah. So, any other questions about the, the videos? Or? Food? Well, it's definitely different. And that, that brings me to some revelation that God was giving me the other day, too, about, about that. Um, so I'll get to that in a minute. But, uh, the food, mainly rice and beans, and uh, rice and beans, and rice and beans. It's either rice and beans, or beans and rice, or rice and beans, or uh, something they call matapa. It's some green substance that I don't really care for very much. It's a little bit like spinach, but I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's not real. I don't think it's spinach. It's something else. Um, I don't like it a whole lot. But, um, what else? Fish. Little tiny fish that they catch in the ocean. You know, every morning they're out there catching fish. They're little tiny ones, and they just throw the whole fish in the bowl and fry it or boil it or whatever they do and then they throw the whole fish on top of your your rice and so you get a fish eyes and head and everything there on top of your rice and, um, they don't nothing do that huh? they don't rice anything yeah there's one other food that they eat and uh, it's interesting to watch them eat it and, and they say about this food that they like it better than chicken believe it or not but if you're 
out in a parking lot, parked like I've been at uh, a gas station there, and uh, parked at, in the gas station, and they have this little light. Uh, you know, at night, the light will be on, a bright light, a floodlight on the ground. And these bugs gather around this light, and they're all over the ground, around the light, and everything. And so they take a little bowl, a bowl full of water, or it has some, some water in it. And they catch these bugs. They're real easy to catch. They throw them in the bowl. The bugs can't fly anymore. And they take them home, they fry them up, and they eat them. And they love them. It's like better than chicken, they say. Now, I've never tried it. I don't know. But hey, maybe so. Put a little yeah. chocolate on them at least. <laughs> no chocolate. Do I what? No. The, I, I'm sorry, maybe I didn't understand you. Did you the the Do I work with Feed the Children no, Ministry? Really oh no, I don't even know where it is. I don't know. But I live, I, I work with Iris Ministries. Uh, Heidi and Roland Baker and you know, we've got lots and lots of children. And How isolated are you, Michael? Uh, you know, what is your largest town in that vicinity? How, how it's probably, it's only 15 minutes away or less. It might be 10 minutes away. Is it's that by vehicle or walking? Vehicle. By walking, it's an hour and a half. And so these guys that come there every morning, they walk an hour and a half to get there, and they walk an hour and a half to get back. Just to hear the word of the Lord. <laughs> I, you know, it's amazing just to seek his face and study his word. And you know, you know, they, they, you know, and I give I, I've started giving as much work to them as I possibly can, you know. So but anyway, it's just they're you know, they're hungry. They you, you know that. If, if you take a glass and it's full, you can't, there's, there's no space, right? No space. But if you take that same glass and it's empty, we can fill it full. You know, and they're, they're, they, they have nowhere to go but up in a lot of ways, you know? Now, I'm not saying that every one of them loves God and every one of them is pursuing God, you know, with all their heart. Because sin is sin. It's sin in Africa just like it is here, and it hardens people's hearts. But when, when, when you're as poor and needy and suffering as they are, it does tend to say, man, there's got to be something else. You know? And so they're more hungry. They really are hungry, a hungry people. Speak Portuguese. Um, yeah, I speak Portuguese. That's what they yeah. And some of those people do too. They all speak. Well, not all of them, but most of them speak Portuguese. Most of them. That's their national language because the Portuguese uh, colonized uh, Mozambique, you know. But they, they they have their tribal languages. Makua is their tribal language, and that's what. All of them speak that. And a good number, most of them speak Portuguese. But those who don't, we always have a... I, I, I speak in Portuguese, and then there's a translator in Makua who, who hears me in Portuguese, and he speaks in, in Makua for those who don't really understand. By the way, uh, I, I forgot to tell you, you can go ahead and turn on the mic. And, you mean record? Uh, I mean the recording, yeah. John 3.16. Oh. Okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> amou o mundo uh, um tanto que in, entregou seu único filho uh, Cristo Jesus. Something 
Yes, of course, definitely. We I give out Bibles all the time to to people. You know. We do. We have both. You know, most of them. We we try to do Makua because more people read Makua than Portuguese. But we have. Where do you get Bibles oh. printed in that? There. I, I, I don't know if you might be able to get it here too. I don't really know for sure. Uh, I haven't checked into that. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah, special order. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Right. Yeah. If anybody wants to check into that for me, be my guest. That would be a blessing for sure. Yeah. Where do you live? South Africa is a large population. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
was, maybe for some reason it's not picking out that picture. But there's a tower, a prayer tower that we used to use and, until the government sent military troops out there to stop us you know, with their weapons and everything. Wow. What? Literally, it's something you go up in? Well, I, I know that uh, a Muslim, one of, one of the Muslim kingpins of the city got one of my emails, you know, and he was outraged, and he could, he just caused this mess with Iris Ministries. Almost got, got their license pulled, or their, whatever, their, yeah. wanted to have their visa pulled, and send, send it, uh, us, wanted to send me, and everyone on that base uh, out of the country because we were praying on the tower and I mentioned, you know, I, here we are in this Muslim village, you know, preaching the gospel, uh, you know, praying that the government of God would be established on earth as it is in heaven and I used the, the word government. You know, this man, he doesn't have a clue, you know, so he, he reads it and thinks sedition, you know, uh, uh, and he sends the, he talks to the governor about it. He send, the governor sends military out there to ask us, what are you doing? Is this a rebellion? You know, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. What's your greatest thing? Everything. Uh, right now it's water. <laughs> I was thirsty. Uh, greatest need. I think the greatest need is help. You know, there's so many needs there that I can't meet them all. I can, no way. I just can't meet all of your needs. And they think that I can. You know, they look to me and they come to me with their needs. It's as if they think I can provide for all of Pimba, or we can provide for all of Pimba. You know, if they have, don't have any food in the house or if they don't have any whatever, they come to us and ask for food. And so help to uh, listen, uh, help to be able to deal with all this, listen to their needs and talk to them in the right way and, you know, and, and also to help them, to go out and to help with what we can. And monetary help, you know, by... To help us to be able to meet some of the needs, but you know, uh, and help to teach them the right uh, things that can help them to help themselves, you know, to, to be able to take care of themselves. And we don't want them looking to us like some big white Santa Claus, you know, that's not the way it should be, you know, that wouldn't be justice to them or to us, you know, so we want to help them to learn things that would help them in their future. You know? <laughs> yeah, it's, well, it's, how long does it take me to get there? By airplane, it takes, um, it's about 24 hours, something like that, or maybe more, in an airplane. So, and it costs about $1,500 or $2,000 to get there. So, yeah, well, even even if that weren't true, we still, it wouldn't be the best thing to bring them over here, you know, to help them right where they're at. Jesus met the people right where they were at and offered solutions. He was the solution to their all their problems. So that's what we're doing, offering Jesus and teaching the gospel, you know, to look to him, to trust in him, to believe in him. You know, I'm a man. We put, I put on my pants just like you. I have to trust in the Lord just like you. I can't provide for you and all of it. You know, you have to trust God for yourself. Uh, uh, Michael. Yes. In Jesus' name, food-wise, what do you need? Rice, water. Rice would be a big help. I mean, but see, you know, I wonder the best thing. I, I don't know. I mean, I've not looked into container shipments, but I think they're quite costly, you know? I, I don't really know. But but I would think that the, the best thing would be money, you know, deposited into a bank account, and we can buy the products that are already there, you know, for, for them. 
I mean, I, I told Anthony maybe I should just come in here Sunday night wearing rags, you know, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what what most of the people that I see look like. But I don't even have any of those, you know, and they're just torn and tattered, you know, holes all in them in the front and in the back, and you know, buttons off, and, and I mean, it's just they they're really quite poor, you know, and and. A lot of times they only have one pair of clothes or two pair, you know. So they wear the same things most of all the time. What is the area that's most climate? What is the temperature? Hot, hotter, and hottest. Those are the three seasons. So summer clothes, they have a better clothes. What time are you going to shift clothes to... Uh... But see, the, the one thing is they, even in the, the time that they consider cold. Okay, the time that they consider cold, I'm wearing shorts and a short sleeve shirt. And they're wearing trench coats. <laughs> I mean, they're like, gosh, man. You know? It, so it gets a little cool, but not not much. We checked on shipping clothes over to the Ukraine. And you can get a U-Haul box, the tall, skinny box, and pack full of clothes. So much weight. I believe it was hundred dollars for like I can't remember how many pounds of clothes that you could ship over there. So you might, you might leave us an address that if we could do that, we could ship some of the clothes over. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, I can do that somehow. Uh, I know at one time I left some information here, some postcard type things that people could put on there. They have magnets on them. I don't know if there's any of those floating around here or not, but. I can see what I can do, you know, um, to, to find a way to get that to you guys. I, I think I have some of those at the house, in fact. So I'm Probably the longest time I've been there has been maybe 11 months. But I'm usually there nine months or something. And then I come back to the States for three months and do the work that I need to do and go out and preach in different churches and talk to the people that, that have helped us out, you know, that do help us out, pray for us. That's my normal schedule, but uh, this time it looks like I'm going to be here more. I, I took a long time getting the 06 and 07 taxes. All, all the receipts and everything scanned into the computer for two two years worth of seats scanned into the computer and sorted, you know, so that we have a record for the IRS and all of that sorted to according to category. So I'll be here a little longer this time. Yeah. Plus I'm going to Israel. I mean, you know, the average person, you know, doesn't have a way to do that. But, I mean, only the wealthy have, have a way to do that. So, they, they, I think they really don't eat a whole lot of meat. Um, they probably, I, I think what they do is, if they eat some meat, they would just go to the local market and buy a leg of a goat or something like that. But you walk through the market and... No they're, they're cutting these goats up right in front of you, and if you get too close, you get splat, you get blood all over you. They splatter it all over you, and the flies, the flies are just swarming that meat. You know, they're all over the meat, and somebody is there with a palm branch, swatting, trying to swat the flies and keep it away from the meat that people eat. Do they have rabbits over there? Rabbits. Well, Michael, if you could take two rabbits over there, they multiply like real fast. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all have all the meat you want forever. That's a good idea. I think they do have rabbits, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Do you have them in South Africa? Huh? Okay. What I 
What is the local industry like? You were There's not much, really. Where, where if, you work? What kind of industry? The there? only industry that I'm thinking of is the, the logging industry. Uh, they bring logs in from out. So is that where most of the bush. maybe work to earn a living? No, most of the people I meet don't have a job. Most people don't really have a job. They just they just live. They exist. There's not much work available for them. They just exist. You know. They plant a little garden. They have what's called they call a mashama, a piece of land somewhere out somewhere where it produces some some something for them to eat. They plant their garden and they hope for the best. You know. I don't know about that, whether they have that name. There, what? It's awful high. I don't remember what it is, but it's really high. Do they own their land or do they just call it their spot? Yeah, they can pretty much, well, I don't uh, Nobody owns land in Mozambique. It's given by the government. The government owns the land and they give it to people. You can't, people can't sell land or not supposed to sell land or else they'd be thrown in jail. You know, you, you're not supposed to sell land. You're supposed to be able to go to the government and get land. But, but the bottom line is people do sell land. You know, they do. All the time. So we helped our guys. Part of what we did for them before we left is help them buy land. Uh, one plot of ground is like maybe a hundred and twenty-five, hundred and fifty dollars, something like that. A plot of ground. So we helped, uh, I don't know, We helped a, quite, quite a number to buy land, and then those that did have land uh, already bought, we helped them to buy shaba, which is the zinc roof uh, material, the metal corrugated tin roof, or whatever, helped them to buy that so that they wouldn't continually come to us because they're getting wet you know, at night. So we help them buy that kind of thing and, and other things to repair their houses, you know, wood. It's kind of a subtropical climate. You get a lot of rain. Only in the rainy season. It's usually dry, so it's it looks kind of like a desert. A lot of the time. Like kind of no, they do. They actually do. They do. Yeah. So maybe there's. There could be more, I don't know, maybe that means there's more rain than what I think. But uh, to soil, me, it looks pretty dry the most of the time. Like uh, yeah, I, I think not much It grows really there in him. Uh, they don't have really great soil because it is on the beach. And even ours, we had to go Car, we had to bring soil in from somewhere else because the, gra the ground is just sand. So we bought soil and had to chip it in. That's how we got our topsoil. Can we send some seeds back with you? You can. Now Watermelon that, will grow in that sand, so will uh, cucumber. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be great. <laughs> You know what we really need? We really need a gardener. A gardener. Because I don't have time. I, I, two things. I don't know anything about gardening. You know? And maybe you don't either. I mean, we live in the land of plenty where, you know, we have grocery stores. And what's a garden? You know? Nobody knows what a garden is anymore. But if, anybody, if you know anybody or want, yeah, we need a gardener. Because I don't know how to do it, and even if I did know how to do it, I don't have time to do it because they're always coming to me with their needs, their wants, their counseling needs, all of this. I mean, I, 
day and night I have visitors, you know, it's it's like a yeah. So I get up, I get up early in the morning. I get up at three, four in the morning because that's my only quiet time, you know. And I have my time with Jesus and, until they come out at six thirty, and then we go and, and worship and pray. And I teach the gospel from seven in the morning till ten. You know, we worship, pray, and teach the gospel from seven to ten, ten thirty every morning, and then then I start my day and. Oh, it's busy. It's very busy. A lot of it's amazing how much work uh, there is over there, and how many needs there are. And just whew, I'm busy the rest of the day, nonstop. No time to be bored. Do they need drugs down there? They do. Yeah, they do. But they don't do. I mean, they're not the same kind of drugs. Think, as here, they don't have the money for one thing, you know. So maybe mushrooms or something like that that they can find, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, that that would probably be the only thing. Maybe marijuana. I think they might have that. Yeah, they do that. Huh? That's what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> How do I feel when I leave? I usually feel like I don't want to leave. You know, I feel like, man, you know, I'm at home here. I'm in my element. You know, even though there's a you know, it, it used to be that where the, the need was so draining, you know, it was like sucking you dry. You know, I was just thinking, you know, man, they're, they're so poor and so needy and so, you know, it would suck you dry. But, but then God gave me the solution to that. Get up at three in the morning, get up at four, you know, and pursue him, seek his face, you know, lay the foundation on the rock. And that way when the day comes and the wind and the waves and the torment of the day, when all the requests and everything come, man, you're founded. You're firmly planted on the rock and you've got the oil of joy and gladness. You've got the spirit of the living God flowing through you. And so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't affect me like it used to. And it doesn't hardly affect me at all. And so I'm, I really love it when I'm there. I love what I'm doing. Absolutely love it. I, I, I don't ever want to do anything else. I wouldn't do anything else. Uh, if I could be Bill Gates and have all the money in the world or whatever, I, I wouldn't trade my life for, for his in a million years, you know, or anybody else. You know? I, I just want to just follow Jesus, seek his face, and teach, feed his sheep. His sons and his daughters. You know, Jesus said, hey, you know, to Peter, Peter, do you love me more than these? Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. Peter, do you love me? Feed my lambs. Peter, do you love me? Feed my sheep. And my greatest joy in life is to seek his face and, and, and to go into the promised land and, and, and bring back the fruit and say, come, sons, daughters, come, family. Let's go. I've gone across the Jordan. I've gone into the promises. I've gone into life and life more abundant. Let's go get it. It's ours. So I wouldn't trade my life for anything in the world and I love it. And I love it there. I mean, it's not my favorite country on the planet. No, it's not. But I love what I'm doing and I love the people. You know, my heart is really fond of them, my sons. You know, they... How did you wind up in I was just, I don't know, really. I was just desperate. I was in a, a business, and my life was consumed with this business, you know, just day and night, working, 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 selling, 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 making more money, trying to grow the business, prosper the business, all this stuff. And I just, you know, I, was, I didn't forsake the Lord completely, but I wasn't pursuing Him with all my heart, you know. 
I, I, there was something else I was pursuing, and so I just got fed up. You know, I just got, man, this, I know what, what's life, and this isn't life. I had life before when I was, when I was a missionary before for seven years, and I carried this 12-foot wooden cross preaching the gospel. I didn't know where I was going to sleep. I didn't know what I was going to eat. I didn't know what I was going to wear. I, I just had a couple changes of clothes, and man, I was, I was mm, so happy because I was right in the center of his will, just seeking his face and sharing the gospel, you know, and my life, I, I felt like the richest man on the planet while I was out there doing that, and just felt the presence of the God, and remember one day so strongly just came over me and just felt, oh man, if I could be anywhere else in the world, if I could do anything else in the world, you know, if I could have all Bill Gates' money that he ever made and ever will make, I wouldn't be anywhere else but right here in these streets in this city. I don't know where I'm at. I don't know what I'm going to eat. I don't know where I'm going to sleep. But God is my life, you know? And so I found, I mean, that is, that is, that is life, you know? And so I, I, I've lost track of what question I was even answering. What is that? Oh, oh, I, because, you know, because I knew that this life existed, but I was so caught up in the cares of this life, and the deceitfulness of riches, I was so caught up in my own house, like in the book of Haggai, it says, you know, hey, this people says that the time has not come to build the house of the Lord. If I can find that little elusive book, that thing is... One page, so small. Uh, so, okay, here it is. This people says the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses and this temple to lie in ruins? Now, therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have so much, and you bring in little. You eat, but you don't have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but you, no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood. Not only you, but bring wood to the mountains and build the temple that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified. You looked for much, but indeed it came to little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while ever one of you runs to your own house, to his own house. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I call for a drought on the land, and on the mountains, and on the rain, the new wine, the oil, whatever the crown brings forth. And so I was suffering because I had left the house of the Lord. I was no longer preaching the gospel. I was no longer evangelizing, making disciples. I was not, I was not doing the, you know, I was not caring for the house of the Lord. I was caring for my own house. You know, I remember I, I was about to get married, and I thought, well, Lord, I guess if I'm going to get married, I, I probably need to make more money than what I'm making right now, so show me what to do. And so this all came open, the opportunity for business, and I just got so wrapped up in it. You know, I'm, I'm not saying you shouldn't work, but I'm, I'm, you know, I'm saying, you know, keep the first thing first. Keep the love of your life first. You know, and somehow, I don't know, I Somehow it wasn't happening for me like it should be. And I know part of the, part of the reason God has called me to, to the mission field. God has called me to the ministry. And if I neglect that, if I neglect the house of the Lord, I'm going to be miserable. You know? And, and I think that's, that's what it's saying here. If we neglect, hey, look, people's hearts are in shambles. They're in a wreck. They're miserable. You know, messed up, filled with anxiety, filled with fear, filled with doubt, you know, filled with all kinds of things that just bring misery and send people to mental institutions or make people kill themselves or whatever. And so the Lord is saying, hey, what are you doing so concerned about your own house? What about your brother? 
You are your brother's keeper. You know, Cain said, what am I? Am I my brother's keeper? He murdered his brother, you know? Well, what are we doing? You know, the whole world is going to hell in a handbasket. And are we just, we're just letting them go? You know, because we're too concerned about our own houses, our own careers, our own money, our own pleasure. You see what I'm saying? So I was so wrapped up in that in my business that my, the, the life that was in me just left me because I left my first love, my love for him and for his house, for his people, for his house in the hearts of men. We're his house. God wants to come and inhabit his house. He wants to sweep it clean, carry out the trash, throw it all out, all these garbage, all this garbage that you've learned in the world from your family, from your friends, from the school system. God says, enough! I want to throw it out. And He wants to use us to do it. He wants us to feed His sons and His daughters, to root up, to pluck out, cast down, and destroy the kingdoms of this world. And, and to build and to plant His kingdom. He wants to come into the house, sweep it clean, and fill it with the Word of God, with the Spirit of God. That's the desire of His heart. And I tell you, if we will give ourselves to Him that, that in an intimate way, that we might prepare our hearts before the Lord to teach His commandments, to teach His laws, to teach His statutes, to, to, to say, come, son, daughter, I've gone into the land, the promised land, I've crossed the river, it's there, you can't take it. You know, the, the spies said that the giants are too big, we can't, you know, we, you know, most of them said the giants are too big, we can't take it. You know, but only Joshua and Caleb said, we can take it, the Lord is with us. And so, God wants us to go and take the land and go back to our sons and our daughters. In fact, it's written in the scripture, go back to your wife, your sons and your daughters who are on the other side of the Jordan. They haven't died to self. They haven't died to the world, the flesh, their selves. They're still on the other side of the Jordan, walking in the flesh. Go back, go into the promises. Take, lay hold of them by faith. Grace through faith. Lay hold of the promises. Walk in His peace and go get your family and bring them in to the land that flows of milk and honey. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit because I want to fill my house. So we're so caught up. I was so caught up in my business that the peace of God and everything that I had before just left me. You know, just left you know, I wasn't worried about God and his house. I was worried about my own house. What did Jesus say? If any man seeks to save his life, he will lose it. But if anyone loses his life for my name's sake, he will find it. You know? So, if we'll lose our lives in him, we'll find it. Anyway, to answer your question, I just became so miserable and discontent that I said, God, I don't know how I got into this mess, but Lord, this isn't life. I don't want this anymore. Please make a way you know, for me to get out. I, I never wanted a business in the first place. I don't know why I'm so wrapped up in this where I can't do your will, but I, I guess there was something not right in my heart. I was too wrapped up in it. And God made a way and for me to sell the business. The, my company salesman came into an inheritance, so he was able to buy a quarter of the business. Or maybe a third, I don't, think, I don't know. But anyway, he was able to buy some of the business, and then I sold the rest to the biggest uh, company of its kind in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, I want somebody in my church knew Roland and Heidi Baker, and um, took me to a conference where they were at, and I talked to Heidi and told her my testimony, and she said, "Well, buy a ticket straight to Pimba and come on over." So it just kind of happened. It's not like, oh, Mozambique, I've been burning in my heart to go to Mozambique forever. You know? um, and in fact, the first year uh, I was there, I was like, I don't, I don't really want to stay here. You know? I don't want to stay here. And that, because of the need, such a drain, like that draining that I was talking about, I just felt like people were coming to me with a big straw and just... Sucking everything out of everything. You know? But then the Lord came 
you know, as I said, I got up every morning seeking his face. I knew I needed something, so I started getting up and doing that. That all disappeared, and man, you know, I love it now. I love what I'm doing. It's still not my favorite country in the world, but, but I love what I'm doing, and I love my sons. And whether I'm there for the rest of my life or not, I don't know, but I, I want to go back and visit my sons and my daughters in the Lord and continue preaching the gospel, continue discipling and helping them to plant churches and to have their meetings in their homes and, you know, uh, making sure that they're on, they're in the faith, you know, and walking on the right path. So, Are there other missionaries that are working in your state where you're going? Yes. 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 <laughs> Huh? How many what do I have? Missionary? Yeah. Oh. Well, on our base, there's only three besides me, so that's four. Only four. And, um, I don't, and I think one of them has gone home, and I don't think he's going to come back. The missionaries and the children and the educator, the house mom, stays there. You know, most of the time she goes home on the weekends. And the guards, the guards live there. Seven, only or eight, eight children. Seven to fifteen. Fifteen. Yeah. What does the guard start you? What do the guards guard? Just everything. You know, in Mozambique, if you don't watch, they'll steal you everything. They'll steal you blind, you know. If you don't watch. What's the Is there such need for everything? They'll just take it all. What's the education system like? Do they have a public school? Uh, yes, they have one in the village. SOS. I don't know if you're familiar with SOS, but uh, I think it used to be a Christian organization. I don't know if it still is, but it's the best school in the town. So there's one in the village and there's one in the city. Who are the children there? Are they orphans or are they Who are the Most of, well, I mean, they're either full orphans or one of their parents is dead, you know? Or one, or neither one of them can take care of them some, somehow, or crippled or something, you know? Um, I, I think we only have maybe three full orphans, and the rest are, only have one parent. Um, yeah. And, but they're just, like that woman, you saw the picture of that woman? that I told you about, that she's in such a mess in her life that uh, uh, she can't get up and walk very well. She can't take care of herself. So her two younger children, uh, well, not younger children. She has two younger children. They're about this high. Her, her two older children, sorry. They, you know, they take care of her. They, they cook. They, whatever work needs to be done, they do it, they take care of her, you know, and so we try to take care of her, and, and by taking care of her children, and by sending through the home with them, you know. What do they do for bathing, and soap, and brushing their teeth, and I just can't get it here, I'm just like. Well, they, they, before they leave work, they take a bath at our place, because Water costs money. <coughs> so they take a bath in our place. And, uh, you know, I mean, obviously not all of the city takes a bath in our place, so they have to get water from somewhere, but they have to pay money for it, so they always want to take their baths at our place after, when they're about to go home. Um, and what else? Well, they just take a bath 
just it's just you know it's not in our house. It's not even in the shower that I use. They just somewhere out there in the little space available. They just have a cup of water and a bucket and just pour it over themselves. You know, and take their bath. Um, and soap, soap is a, a precious thing over there. It's like gold to them. You know? <laughs> yeah, because it costs money and they don't usually have it. And um, so they use our soap or ask us for soap like a good bit of the time. You know? They love it. That's another part of the reason they think their baths there because we have soap. You know? They wash their clothes there because we have detergent to wash their clothes. You know? And they don't have that or tell you that. What if they don't know what a washing machine is? There is no washing machine for them. That's like a spaceship or a rocket ship for them. Yeah, they, they wash their clothes by hand, you know, in a little bucket. They just go to the well, get some water, and there's a little bucket about this high that they put their clothes in and scrub by hand. That's what I was thinking, but is that how you wash your clothes? Well, thanks be to God that uh, he's given me people that, that care for me and, and you know, I, have, I have somebody who works in my house who washes dishes, who washes clothes, that kind of thing. So you got water and electricity. It's my, one of my spiritual sons, my longest standing spiritual son that I've known ever since I've been here. And you saw him on there, I, don't, I didn't point him out, but he takes care of me. You have water and electricity on the top down there? No. We tried to dig a well, as you saw, but every time we put the pipe in, and the pipe caved in, the, the weight of the rocks caved in the pipe. And so we, we weren't able to get a pipe that was good enough there. You have to go somewhere else to another world or something to get a pipe that's good enough. <laughs> but anyway, so we don't have a well, but there is one three or four hundred yards. And, well, it's probably, it's probably two or three hundred away from us. Yeah, haul water to the yeah. Mountain. Yeah. Our workers do that. The, the cook hauls water for the cooking. Or or his helper, you know, he hauls water for cooking. And then um, the guards usually uh, yeah they, they our guards bring water for us, you know. <coughs> put water there's waters wa buckets on our front porch about this tall that are they fill with water. And so I take that's how I take my bath, too. So son, so he, no. He, no, he's got a wife and children. Is that one room? It is. It's just one room. Uh, I, the, it had a patio out front, but, and, and so I closed it in. I closed the patio in with uh, windows. Um, no, no glass, no, nothing. It's just made out rebar. Rebar is a word here, right? Yeah, rebar. Uh, it's made out of rebar. The windows are just crisscrossed. You know, that's how the windows look. So it keeps thieves out. And so my patio, I put windows around it. I put a little block wall about this high and windows, you know, to the ceiling. And now I sleep on the patio. Outside, and my little bed is out there. I sleep out there. And, uh, yeah, we have our meetings there, you know, on my patio. <laughs> and uh, my little room is just—it's just a kitchen with um, you know, a table in it and a, a, a gas-powered refrigerator and a gas-powered stove. That's what I have. And there's a little bathroom inside too. Uh, I have my desk there. I had them make a special desk for me to study, you know, for what I wanted and needed. So I have a nice little study desk in the house. And see that? I have a little lantern, you know, because I'm there at three in the morning and there's no light. <laughs> Were you trying to read? It's kind of like camping out all the time. That, that's it. That's what it is. I mean, I sleep outside. 
I, I sometimes sleep outside, and I, until I built that patio, I just slept on the patio. I didn't have a roof or anything. Does it get cool at night? Uh, not really. In the, in the cool season, yes, a little cool, but not much. And that's another part of the reason I like to sleep out on the patio, because it's so hot. You know, the wind, just, there is no mosquito net, there is no uh, window, glass window, because I like all the wind possible to come in there, because it's unbearably hot if, if you don't have it that you way. You might could get you some of those favorite people to stand there with palm trees and baby palm <laughs> yeah, I can't sleep when it's hot. Our snacks an issue there. Oh, we've seen snakes, but not, it's not a common thing. You know? I've seen the snakes you know, when I'm crossing the road, when I'm driving down the road. Other people on the property have seen snakes, you know, but I, I never have. The seat on the issue with you because you don't put up for that? They can be. If, the, if it's not windy, they, they bother me. So I get up and put on my ski repellent. I sleep in my clothes. I just sleep just like I am, you know. I take my shoes off, my socks off, and I sleep in the same clothes that I wore that day, you know. Because otherwise I'm out so I'm outside and I can't just sleep in, you know, pajamas or whatever I what it's like in here, you know. Say what? Uh no, there's not. But there yeah, no there's not. You just, Do you have you, a skid in that when you're at staying? I haven't had. I did buy one shortly before I left because they were bothering me really bad. It hadn't been windy in a while and they were bothering me really bad. So I started. Yeah. Does it, the mosquito net uh, prevent the air from going? I know it's going to you know, follow the It does, and that's why I don't really like mosquito nets. It, it keeps the air from blowing on you, so I'd rather just wear a mosquito repellent. Oh. But, you know, there's big spiders. I, I don't, I've never seen a tarantula, but there's big spiders. Yeah. Some of the, the missionary girls.